Hey guys, Paul Kepner here with PK Productions and today we're going to talk about this shoulder rig. I've had uh, quite a few people ask me about it. I got this probably about um, about a year ago, so maybe maybe a little over a year. Not quite a year and a half, I don't believe. It's actually the Film City FC30. Um, at the time, I, I, I was looking for something to stabilize my images a little bit better because I shoot with the GH2 primarily and the lenses I use are vintage lenses. <clears throat> this is actually a Canon T3i on here just for demonstration, just to show you, since there's no way to demonstrate it and shoot at the same time. But um, overall, it's a, it's, a, it's a decent starter rig, just something to get to be able to stabilize the image. Uh, when I first bought this, it was on eBay. I think it was $143, if I'm not mistaken, $142, something like that, included shipping. So. It wasn't too bad. A lot of people are asking, is it, you know, is it, is it all plastic or what? Yes, it does have plastic. It has a little bit of metal to it. Um, since I'm shooting with a lighter camera, which is, like I said, a GH2, and I'm using vintage lenses, something light like this would be, you know, fine for me. Of course, these rigs go up in price depending on the, the brand and features that you're looking for. But um, like I said, for me, it worked fine. The, uh, the handles, of course, are all plastic. The matte box, they call it a matte box. It's not really. It's more of an um, exaggerated lens hood. That's, that's pretty much all it does. I'll show you what a, or describe what a, a real matte box is a little bit later. The brackets you see on the bottom here, right here, and, of course, that and this, those are plastic as well. Um, the bracket that the uh, camera mounts on, that is plastic. This is, they call it a foam, but it's, I mean, it's, it gives a little bit of cushion when you're shooting with it. Um, it comes with some rings, gear ring, uh, lens rings for the follow focus. It's not too bad. I mean, like I said, for $143, you can't expect a whole lot, but I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. And that's to stabilize the image. I wouldn't put a lot of weight on here, but, uh, like I said, it's, it's pretty good, I mean, considering the price. But uh, tell you what, let's sit down, take a look at it, and I'll show you everything it came with, what I like about it, and what I'm not too crazy about, and what I'd like to upgrade later, or, I mean, eventually get a nicer, you know, all-metal rig, but that's further down the road when I start getting bigger, heavier cameras. And again, this T3i is just for demonstration. I, I don't shoot with Canon. Nothing wrong with Canons. I just prefer to shoot with Panasonic. So let's take a look at it. All right. Like I said, this is a the uh, Film City FC30 shoulder rig. Um, it's not a super high quality, but again, I'll show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, because of the price, I don't expect a huge amount of... Um, you know, high-end quality features on it. I, I know it's going to be uh, made pretty much cheaper than what it should be, or, or you know what you would like. But again, for the lighter cameras and vintage lenses like these, these Canon lenses, they don't have the image stabilization in it, actually, like this lens does. So it's kind of crazy to put this lens on here anyway. But um, like I said, the matte box, or you know, it's lens hood basically. Let me take this off here and I'll show you. Let me get this off. All right. One thing, big, big issue I, I really don't like about it. The quick release right here is plastic. It's, I'm not crazy about that. And they could have made it a little bit better. They could have put a, you know, some type of metal on there. That's one, one gripe I have. My biggest complaint about it is the quick release plate right here. It is plastic as well. The bad thing about it is, especially with this camera, because it's heavier than my GH2 and, the, and the, this whole thing is heavier. Because it's plastic, when you tighten it down with the clamp, let me show you. Set that down. Okay, this clamp right here. When you tighten this down, and you slide the plate in there, what happens is this plate right here, it's flat. 
and you go to tighten it, it starts bowing on you, which is really bad because what happens when it bows, the bottom of your camera isn't sitting flat. It's just teetering on a little small spot. So what happens is when you're using the follow focus, it will have the camera rotate, especially if you're using longer lenses. Shorter lenses, it's not so bad just because you have the, the you don't have the leverage factor. Like on this one, it really does it bad. Um, I'm, I'm planning on ordering another quick release plate from Amazon, one that's all solid metal, solid metal plate here, and it matches up with my tripod and my slider, so that way, if I ever need to use it, then I can just take it right off the tripod and put it on here, and then I'm good to go. That's, that's the big complaint about it. Um, second one, all the screws on here are Phillips screws. And they do give you these, a whole set of, a whole slew of these thumb screws, which is nice to have. But the problem is, if you have the thumb screw on the bottom, you don't, it doesn't give you room to put a quick, uh, your tripod quick release plate on here for mounting it for a tripod. If you put the thumb screws on the top here, it's, they stick up too far and it's in the way of the camera hitting it. So you have to rely on just straight Phillips screws and a, a Phillips wrench to loosen or tighten this and move it around. On the nicer um, shoulder rigs, they actually have a, um, a little bitty, kind of like a thumb screw, but it's on the side, it's all metal and it tightens down and loosens up. And when it does, you can shift everything around. Much better design than this, but again, this is just a little over $100, so I can't expect a whole lot. One thing I did like is the follow focus. It's very, it's pretty smooth, and it's all metal. Um, you can see right here on the top, it has a small gear and a large gear, and you can actually swap them. You can take the gears off and flip them around however you want. Um, knob on the bottom, so you can adjust your follow focus in and out wherever you need it. It slides pretty easy. Um, it has a stop right here that you can loosen to adjust so you can set your um, set the turns for the follow focus so you'll know where to go. Another nice thing which some of them uh, you know the nicer ones do I was really surprised this one did. Let's see if I can get it from behind it. The marker comes off so you can actually mark on it and then when time to, uh, you know, mark on it with a pencil, grease marker, whatever. And then when it's time, you can wipe it off and then it just fits back on there. It's magnetic. So that's pretty nice. Um, it did come with, got a little box over here full of stuff. It came with speed crank, which is nice. You can, let's see if I can do this without, there you go. It goes like that. So when you're, you've got the camera up here like this and you know where your marks are, you can just use this instead of trying to turn it. You can just use your finger and you can hit the focus every time. That's a nice feature. Um, it also came with, here's those thumb screws I was telling you about, a whole bag of them. So that and Allen bolts and little washers and everything. It came with this gear here, which is nice. And it comes with, two other size gears, and then this quick one that you're supposed to throw on the lens and use. It's more its more of a flexible rubber, throw it away. It, it's, it's crap, even if it's a, a fairly loose lens, just toss it because what happens, not only because it's a rubber type, but also because it's so thin, it moves. So when you're trying to focus and it, it'll drive you crazy, so just throw it away. Um, Another deal is if you're using this shoulder rig for a camcorder type and you have the handle on the top, it's kind of a cool little item. This mounts onto the handle of the camcorder and you have your mounting points on the top. So if you want to mount more stuff on here and then if you have a hot shoe on the camcorder. So that's kind of a cool deal. And then of course it also comes with bunch of different Allen wrenches and everything. Um, it also came with these spacers and washers that you can use wherever you need it. And kind of a cool deal, cable management clips that they, you know, if you have your recorder on here and, or, you know, a light or whatever, and you're running cables, you can just clip it on here. 
kind of keep them neat and organized. So, um, like I said, it's a pretty basic one. So, and again, because of the price, I, I wouldn't expect a whole lot. But for needing something to stabilize right now, it works fine, especially for the vintage lenses. Like I said, they don't have image stabilization built in, so I needed something. And with the light camera and these lenses, it works fine. One thing I will show you, if you're using mirrorless can, um, cameras, I think for all the Nikon and the uh, Canon guys out there, you won't have a problem with it. Well, this is what I ran to, and it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. There's no way to fix it unless you just completely buy new gears. And there's several companies out there that actual they sell the, the gears with different in, uh, diameters with little set screws so you can set it. The Canon lenses, big enough. They fit in here perfect. No big deal. 35 millimeter lenses, you can see they slide right through. And, uh, oh, oh well, I've got a micro four thirds lens around here somewhere. It, there's no way it's going to fit on here. So, unfortunately, I cannot use these lenses unless I use, like this is one of my uh, 85 millimeter primes. It'll barely fit on there and I'll just, I have to tighten it down quite a bit and then I can get it to fit on there. But that's about the only one. Um, the little C mounts I have, forget it. <laughs> uh, I have a 70 and 200 millimeter, or 70 to 200 millimeter zoom and the, the barrel and it's a pretty good size. I, and it doesn't even fit on there like it does on this 85. So um, like I said, for Canon and Nikon guys, you shouldn't have a problem with it because your lenses are bigger diameter. Um, I think that's about it. These handles here, for like I said, they're all plastic and there's only one tension right here. So to adjust them, basically unscrew it you know, in and out, however you want to put it, and tighten it back down. And it's good to go. I mean, it's you can see it's not super flimsy. Like a lot, you know, a lot of reviews say they're super flimsy and rattling and falling apart and stuff. I've had this one for, like I said, a little over a year, and it takes a beating because I, I throw it in the back of the van or, or you know wherever. And if I'm on shoot, usually most of the time, I don't even use this uh, mat box. I, I completely take it off. And because of the plastic plate, I just take the follow focus off because the rings really don't fit my gear or my lenses anyway. So I just have the camera on here and I'm just manually focusing the lenses and it, and it works fine for me. But uh, that's one of the reasons I haven't bought a new top plate for it, just because I'm not using the follow focus. And I don't, it, you know, in order to buy a new top plate to make the camera a little bit more stable, I'd have to buy all new gears and it's just a, it, yeah. I don't, there's no need for it at this moment. May, later on down the road, yeah, I'll definitely invest in it. I was going to tell you on the matte boxes, I told you what the difference would be. Let me show you the side. You have your barn, barn doors here. On real matte boxes, these are two-piece, and they have a hinge in the middle. So when you raise the eyebrow part, this actually goes with it to keep it completely covered. Um, and the open part over here on the side, that doesn't exist. Right here where it's open, they'll have three different ways of sealing the light coming around the back of the lens. They'll have either like a, a, a little sock with a, some type of tension, either a rope or string to kind of go around the lens. They'll have, uh, I've seen little foam donuts that insert in there and then you put the lens in and it keeps the light out. And then on the nicer ones, the, especially the cinema lenses, they're made to an exact size and they have rings that actually snap in here. And so your lens fits exactly in there and it keeps the light out. And then on the very nice ones, they have a hinge usually on the side. So when you get to, uh, get ready to change your lenses out, you release a little lever. This whole matte box just swings off to the side to give you full access to your lenses. Change out your lens, swing the lens, or swing the matte box back and you're good to go. But again, you're, you're looking at usually for matte boxes like that. With the hinge and everything, they're going to be 400 and up. You know, they're easily three times more than this whole rig was right here. And follow focuses, you can get some decent ones 
uh, usually inexpensive for 80 or 90 dollars or so F to me for 140 dollars for the whole thing and everything it came with I'm, I'm happy with it could it be better absolutely it could be um, oh yeah the rails the 15 millimeter standard rails they are metal and then as well as the cross bar here is all metal so and this again these little thumb screws you can loosen those and you can move the pad forwards and backwards I like this because I can mount my um, recorder on here and eventually I'd like to get a counterbalance weight order one to put back here so when I've got it on my shoulder it balances a little bit better it's a little it's front heavy right now which again I'm not using everything on it and I'm using light cameras and small lenses so it's 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 no big deal really <clears throat> I was at a I shot a concert um, a few days ago and I was there for about two and a half hours using it just like I told you with you know manually focusing and it was fine now if I had the big camera like this with follow focus and everything I'd probably have sore shoulders or something but again you can order the counterbalance weight I, th I think for, for my camera a little four or five pound counterbalance would be plenty so anyway I hope this was helpful to you I know I've, I had a lot of people asking about it so and if you have any other questions oh one other thing on if you look on eBay now for this one for the FC 30 I've been told that the Mac box is completely different I looked it up and sure enough it is they have one the uh, nicer one that I was telling you about that has the hinges and, and goes with the eyebrow it doesn't swing out and I think it has <clears throat> if I remember correctly I think it had the little foam donuts on the back so that's a nice deal I believe the follow focus is same and, and everything else is same except for the plate um, oh it's another thing let me show you something here okay got the plate off of the camera another big issue I had besides the plastic on this top plate they originally had a little strip of plastic on there it wasn't even rubber it was more of like a soft flexible plastic so when you put the camera on there it wouldn't even it would just slid all over the place so and I tried little rubber strips on here and again because it bows you still wouldn't it wouldn't grab the camera so what I did is I had these little dots it, they're actually um, little rubber feet you can put on the bottom of computers or speakers or whatever and the cool thing about those they help quite a bit for me because when you tighten it down and it bows those dots are still ridges so you still have a, a wide flat surface that the camera sits on so kind of got around it um, is it the best way to do it no uh, the best way would just be throw this thing away and get a whole new one but again I don't really have a use for it or you know for the the higher end ones right now since I'm just manually focusing and I don't want to buy all new ring uh, gears for it so um, anyway I hope this helped if you guys like this video and want to see more please subscribe and follow and like us we'll have links for everything in the description and also links for our Facebook page Twitter and Instagram so this, again this is Paul Kepner with PK Productions and I look forward to seeing you next time thank you